Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This here is Porty's Garage, home of DIY, mostly geared to automotive, but here at Mix, you never know what you're gonna get. As you can see, I'm sitting on the back porch, got the sun setting here, and I've got a bunch of radios on the table, two to be exact, and we're gonna be reviewing a new one, a TDH3 from TID Radio, I purchased this radio myself, but I'm currently working on an affiliate with them. Mr. Porty's working out some of the paperwork. By the time this uh, episode airs, we should be an affiliate for uh, TID Radio. And since everybody's familiar with a Baofeng UV5R, I'm going to compare the package that you get here for the TID Radio with what you typically comes in the UV5R, and you can compare sizes and some of the uh, features of each. So let me get the camera turned around, and let's start playing with some radios. All right, here we go. So here we've got the new TID Radio uh, TD-H3 ham radio. You can see the box that it came with. That right there is something different that did not come with the radio, but I'll be showing that here shortly, but I want to get that in here. So there's the package. Uh, came with the long Nagoya antenna. Comes with a standard antenna comes with the what I like to call the uh, Secret Service earphone piece. It is a USB-C charging, which does charge on the back of the uh, battery there. Uh, it comes with the charging block, comes with a belt clip here, came with a second battery, and I believe these are 25 milliamps. I will check my paperwork over here in a second to confirm that. Uh, a second bell clip, I think for the second radio, comes with the uh, wrist straps, and it also does have a standard docking or battery charging station, and you can see the contact points in the back of the battery. So now what this is, let me bring this up front here, and this is the whole reason I got this radio. I was looking at things online, and it said, with the Odemaster app, you can use a Bluetooth dongle that I did purchase from TID Radio, and you can program this radio through the comms port on the side. Let me tell you, it works, it's nice, you can get repeater lists when you're out traveling and program them right into the radio. And what's even better, and I'll show you in a little bit later in the video, you can program the radio as I've done using Chirp software, and I'll have all these uh, sites and repeaters and GMRS and uh, Simplex programmed in. And in the blank spots, you can use this Odemaster software and slip in some new repeaters in between on some of the blank memory channels. It does have 199 uh, memory channels. So this whole package here uh, is I have about $39. Packages change, so you might want to keep watching the website. $39.99, and I believe that uh, dongle was $7 or $8, and uh, you can look around for those too. And then this is the Baofeng that uh, everybody's familiar with, and it comes with the programming cable. Um, it comes with the, the uh, Secret Service earpiece there, the docking stations, the extra battery. And again, you can get different types of packages. Uh, this is a wall charging unit here, not the USB-C. And it's got some of the, <laughs> excuse me, straps. Both of these radios will work. I got this separate before, this uh, remote handset that plugs into the comms port that the wire comes out and hooks up to a electronic earmuffs uh, for shooting or whatever you're doing and you can do comms directly into your headset through the COM port of either the UV5R or even the TID radio, which is right there. They are the same, interchangeable. That is nice. Uh, prices for the Baofeng, I think is anywhere like 25 to 30 some, depending on the size batteries and things you get. So let me clear this off the table and then I'm gonna show you some differences on the screen size of both of these. And uh, I'll leave this bigger antenna on 
and then at the end, towards the end, I will uh, show you the programming of a couple repeaters, and then I will do the uh, watt check. So let me set up the radio so it points straight down, and I will go through some of the specs of each of these. All right, so we've got the radios here, and I forgot to mention they both do come with user manuals. So you can see the difference between the two user manuals. All right. So let's look at printed out a couple sheets here for the uh, TID radio. You can see the frequencies, frequency range here. You've got your uh, AM FM bands, you got your air bands, and then you've got basically two meter, 70 centimeters, and the GMRS. GMRS is usually about 462, 467 on the channels, and you can see that's that's in between here. Uh, I was talking before battery size. It is a 2,500 milliamp battery, and it does come with two batteries here. And that has the USB-C charging there. And then you can see for the Baofeng, I won't read those off. Similar frequencies, slightly different. It does not, the, UV, the uh, Baofeng does not have any of the air, uh, air channels there. So, and you can get different size batteries. I think this one's only an 1800 that came in that packet. So here are the sizes again. Um, I'll turn them both on. Channel mode. So you can see on this one, I can have, I have it on channel mode and you can see the names of the repeaters that I put in. Welcome. And the same thing here. Uh, again, I got a repeater and I've got the, uh, that's actually the air band. Yeah, and that is the Holly repeater that came up and I'll show you with the dual watch you're gonna see here. This lower one on here is, um, I'm going to turn that way down. The lower one is the uh, Bishop Airport that's nearby here. So you can see the difference in the screens. You've got the color screens. You actually have a power meter on this one. This shows you the uh, frequency. And there's a bunch of symbols. I'll let you go through the uh, manual to figure those out. But what is neat on here is you've got um, the two different push to talk one for each each of these bands here so you can see when that green dot's going on you're receiving here so this is where you're sitting on so i'm going to switch a b you can see that goes to holly repeater i change it now to the fenton repeater uh let's go back down a to b this is on the Bishop Airport. I'm gonna change it off of that. Let's go to like channel 10. One, zero. Oops, I should've gone zero. Cancel. That's 100, so let's go zero. One. one, zero. There's 10, so that's the Rensen, that's 26 miles away. Fenton's not that far away. So this screen is very easy to see. Now the one thing I will caution, and I did notice on other Baofangs, when you get a red color during the day, it's very hard to see uh, out in the sunlight. So the red's kind of difficult to see and that just notes power down here. So it's not as critical. Other radios, when you bring up the menus, I'm gonna hit the menu button. Menu. You can see what happens when you hit the menu button. Um, it, you can actually see it in the yellow and it's a, a good contrast. So I believe this is the exit. And then if I switch this, mode. it switches whatever this green arrow is on, switches it to frequency. So if I go up to channel A there, hit, mode. it puts it to frequency mode there. Channel mode. So we'll go back to channel mode for both of these. Channel mode. Uh, what else is kind of neat? Oh, I'm going to show you here quick. Let's do that. Let's do the, so... Here, uh, you can see I'm sitting on the Rensen here, but if I push this upper push to talk, watch, you'll see a, you'll see the little bar come in Fenton. 
K-E-8-U-W-I-C-Q-C-Q. -C -Q. I don't think I hit that one. That one's over a hill. So now I'm going to push the lower push to talk. Without going from A to B, you just hit the lower push to talk, and you'll watch. You'll see a little green bar here. K-E-8-U-W-I-C-Q-C-Q. -C -Q. I didn't hit that either, but I also have the antenna pointed horizontal. Let me try one more time. K-E-8-U-W-I-C-Q-C-Q. -C -Q. Nothing. So I'll put the mag mount on here shortly when I check power, and we'll see if we can hit those again. Uh, what else do we have here? So I talked about 199 channels. Uh, it's USB charging, the dual band listen and show. That's right here, the listen and show. It's got the dual push to talk. It also has the FM radio, so if I go... Menu. Menu. Oh, eight. Oops. It should have been eight. Let me cancel that. Menu. Eight. Just for kids, medicine. So you can see now I'm on a... Uh, FM radio that's here and you heard it come through want to keep that off so we don't get copyright problems and that's even while we're still listening to these other two channels so let me turn that off menu 8 well that should turn it off oh, actually I'm I've got to be in frequency mode oh There we go. She is off. So I can turn that back up. Oh, Val Fang's coming in. So we've got the Pontiac repeater on that one coming in. So if I had the Pontiac repeater on here, you'd see that come through. I'm actually going to turn this one off. You can see the difference in sizes. They're not, not much different. It's really just the battery size. The radio is pretty much the same. So if you got a bigger battery here, it would do the same thing. Uh, scan. Actually, I want to go through the scan. I believe this is the scan here. Pushed and hold. I could be wrong. Menu. There we go. So there's my scanning going through. And again... Remember last time that whatever I have repeater in the Flint Ford, it's got some kind of signal. I'm gonna have to get that off of my programming for these radios. But I can just skip through that. Hit scan again. Scanning stop. I'll do that one Scanning more. begin. There you go. And it goes through the channels pretty quick. And it'll stop at that Flint 4 one more time. And I should be able to go the opposite direction then. Very interesting. So, now that I've got that done, uh, let me try a couple other uh, repeaters nearby, see if I can hit them. And then I will... Uh, program in a separate repeater. So let me stop the scanning. Scanning stop. And let's go up to channel. Zero, zero, one. And that's Clarkson. Let's see if we can hit that. So I gotta use the top button here because I want the Good uh, evening. The time is seven oh two PM on two meter and four forty. Welcome to the G M A R C Link Repeater System W W eight G M. So you can see I'm getting the Rensen that's up the antenna's up quite high. I can receive it almost all the time, depending on conditions whether I can hit it. If I go up up and upstairs and go out an upstairs window, I can typically hit it, but from the uh, the the porch here sometimes I can't hit it. So let's try the Clarkston, see if I can hit that. K-E-8-U-W-I-C-Q-C-Q. -C -C -Q. That one did not come in. Two. 
K E A U W I C Q C Q. So I hit Holly here. Let's see if anybody comes back. I'll give it a second. Now, when you are programming, I'm going to let you know programming with this dongle, um, it will put in a Roger beep you can turn on and off. It will, uh, if you're not careful, you could change the l language to Chinese and then you can't read anything. You don't know what to do with any of the buttons. Luckily, I was able to reprogram it. So I'll try one more here. Three. Let's try, four, I don't know where it's at. Five, six, seven. I'm gonna try top of Troy here. I think this is uh, like 14 miles away. K-E-8-U-W-I-C-Q-C-Q. I didn't hit it. We'll do one more. Six, five. We'll do Pontiac. K-E-8-U-W-I-C-Q-C-Q. This is the W-H-O-A-K repeater. So you can see I hit that one. We'll let it sit a little, see if someone comes back. And while they're doing that, I'm going to have to switch radio or uh, phones here to record with a different phone so I can show you the uh, app that goes along with this and then find where I want to program in one of these channels. So give me a minute here. I will change that out and we'll be right back. All right, here we go. So I've got the radio. It is on. Let me show you one thing. You've got to have, see this little Bluetooth button here? You hook the, uh, it says Bluetooth right in there. You press and hold. And see the Bluetooth emblem come on. You've got the dongle here. It goes right into the comms port. Turn it on on top. You can see it's on. So, and then here is the Odemaster app. I'm going to move it to the side when I start it because it's got my location on there. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit program, select the Bluetooth, and you can see here is uh, TDH3. Connect that. It is there. So once you go through and select again, you can see it's got TID radio. I'm going to try on my Baofeng later, see if I can use it on the Baofeng. But here we go, the H3. Now I'm going to try to read the radio to input my channel settings that I have, what I programmed in with the chirp, and bring them into here. So it's reading. So you can see there it's reading and percent complete. And you can see the bar graph here going. Took a little bit of time, but not too bad. If you saw how many I had programmed in before. So now you can see I've got all these channels and if I hit the channel list, all these green ones I have programmed in from Chirp, the red ones are blank channels. I'm gonna try to program in a different one close by here uh, on channel 47. So I'm gonna hit the repeater button down here. And now it's looking repeaters close to me and you can see it's telling me this Holly Oakland one is at 6.4 away but I don't want to use that frequency um, which one did I hit before I didn't hit Holly I don't know if I tried a Fenton let me try a Fenton one let's do an FM all-star so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this import to channel 47, confirm, it tells me right here, it wants it on channel 47, import, and I believe I hit right, it's been a little bit, and you can see it's programming here and here.
So what's really neat about this is you go different places, and I did this, I went to Traverse City, searched for uh, repeaters near me, and I was actually talking to a couple people up in Traverse City. And then when I went and visited my folks, I did it down there too. So it was kind of nice. You can quickly find repeaters nearby. That may be very helpful when you're uh, when you're out somewhere, and um, you know you maybe you want to have some emergency communications when you're traveling, hiking, something like that. Uh, you can program in local repeaters. Now I don't remember here. That's the name of for channel one. High power. You can see different things on here functions so these are all the different functions and modes that you can get and where was uh the roger beep i have that turned off i don't remember where language was but you got to hear this language if you accidentally program in chinese you won't be able to use the radio till you redo it again don't ask me how i know that so let's go to channel 47 since that's done We are in channel mode. Let's do 047. See, it only put the call sign in, but let's see if I can hit it. K E A U W Y C Q C Q. I didn't hit that one. Let's try a different one since that goes so quick and easy. Let's try another one. Let me go channel 8. Uh, I know I hit the Pontiac one, so let's try that. All right. So let's just do that whole uh, program again. The H3. And we'll fast forward through this. Reading the radio here. So we can see the list again. Forty seven's full. I'm going to go forty eight. Let's look at the repeater list. Let's see if I can find the Pontiac. Let's try Pontiac. And I said 48, right? 48, confirm, import. And let's write. <laughs> you know, we may have hit that last time, but I'm still going, my comms is through the Bluetooth. So that could be the problem. Let's move this out of the way. This time, I want to remove the Bluetooth, turn it off, turn off Bluetooth here, that's gone, and now let's go channel, let's try 48 again. Zero, four, eight. There we go, let's try it. So I'm going to use the bottom push to talk, you should see the green button right here, K-E-8-U-W-I-C-Q-C-Q. -C -Q. Nothing on that, so let's go up. 148, 47. Uh, there, so this one is a Clarkson here. K-E-8-U-W-I-C-Q-C-Q. -C -Q. I hit it. That's one that I programmed there. Using that dongle. So that comes in pretty handy. Um... When you're out and about and you can pick up different uh, repeaters and you don't have to try to program with these little tiny buttons. 
So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take off this antenna, connect to the SWR with this guy and uh, check the power. So give me a second here. All right, here we go again. I've got the Surecom powered up here. Now I did, when I put it away, I left it on. So I've got it connected to the charger. Let's hope she stays powered up here. Um, I've got the radio now set to a simplex, two simplex station. Simplex one, I got at 148 right here. And then I've got uh, 125, which is 442. So we'll try a two meter and a 70 centimeter. So I don't hear anybody on those. I'm going to hit this top push to talk. Let's see what we get. So we get an, you can see it's 148 SWR of uh, 1.3, but the power right there, if you can see that 4.7, just about the five Watts. All right, let's use this bottom button here. And that's 4.42, and you're at 4.46 watts. So, and a good SWR. But again, I wouldn't count the SWR that much. And even the power could be a little better. I might have some loss coming from the radio through this little connector. I may get a better connector here, see if that improves things on the, the meter and maybe a true SWR. So, uh, let's, while we're wrapping up here, I'm going to put this to... On my other piece of paper here. Let's do a channel one, one zero seven. seven. So that again, that's the flint. And then let's go to channel B. And I think it's zero one zero. The Rensen. We'll see if we hear anybody talk while I close up. All right. Let me move the camera and we'll do a close up. All right. So that about wraps it up. Uh, looking through my sheet here, there is one more thing. One more thing to go over. It does say it has a cloning. I didn't try it where you should have a one button clone every, the whole program from one radio to the next. Uh, if I get another one of these, I may have to try that because that would be interesting if you have a group of people figure out how just to clone the whole memory. So that is uh, the Bishop Airport. So I'm using a mag mount set off to the side and it's picking up uh, Bishop Airport. But I think I've got everything else covered on here. Uh, the scanning, the programming, that Odemaster. Now that app I think is the best with that dongle. You can take that with you and program anywhere. 199 memory channels, the USB charging, the dual band watch. As you can see, I'm listening to right now the uh, Flint Bishop Airport and also the Rensen uh, Tower um, and the dual button uh, push to talk so you don't have to remember which one you're on you're just either top button or bottom button A or B and uh, listen to the radios and the scanning so we talked about most of it so thanks for watching if you like the content please make sure you like and subscribe thanks for watching Porty's Garage yeah, one more thing we need to add is uh, the TID radio here. Comes with this nice in the box here. Nice, well protected for all the little gadgets. So, just want to make sure we add that in.